Hi guys, it's Aoife from Words of Clover and I am going to be starting a long weekend reading vlog today. So today is Thursday um, and on Monday it is the May Bank holiday in Ireland so we all have a day off and in my work as well we are actually having tomorrow off um, because we didn't work a Friday off that we should have had off um, a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I'm looking forward to just relaxing, reading, going um, home, uh, sit in the garden and yeah, and being with dog because so unfortunately like I feel like the last couple of reading vlogs um like things have just been happening in my life that are just like not nice and every time I come onto a vlog I still I feel like I have more bad news to share with people but I also think this one in particular is important for people to know because it kind of affects my channel in a way and it's something that well she has been on my channel um a lot and that's Luna my golden retriever so this day last week she she was really really ill for a couple of days she was 13 and brought her to the vet and there was nothing that could be done and we unfortunately had to say goodbye to her uh, in future videos um luna won't be there anymore it'll just be desi so we only have desi left now so in six months we've gone from having three dogs to one dog which is a massive blow i have to say so yeah it hasn't been like a nice few months i have to say there's just been like one thing after another obviously we lost jeremy in December and then we lost granddad in March and now we've lost Luna and yeah it just feels like one thing after another but it's safe to say that like my heart is completely broken with Luna because she was my baby she was my soulmate she was you know some dog for one dog um she was so so special and she was the love of our lives so it's very very strange not having her around she was just such a big big part of our lives um for 13 years we were so lucky to have her for 13 years she she was a very very good girl and we will miss her always um so yeah so i just i just thought it was important to share that as well um because obviously as i said like she had been on my channel a lot she was always in my vlogs people always commented about her as well and um, like she was such a beautiful dog both like physically and then her personality as well but would always comment how they loved seeing her and how cute she was and how funny she was because she always had her little antics on camera as well would always show off almost for the camera she loved showing off she was such like she loved all the attention on her all the time have like a little tribute for her at the end of this video um so i would love if people even even if you don't watch the rest of the video if you skip to the end and even watch my little tribute to Luna that would be would mean so much as I said my heart has been very very heavy uh the past couple of months particularly the past week um I've just been very down and sad and missing her and remembering her so yeah so luckily books have been a great not really an escape but they've definitely been a massive comfort at the moment I feel like in the last week or so I've actually read quite a lot and this weekend I'm just planning as I said to do a lot of reading I'll be going home just to check up on Desi because obviously he's the only dog now and he's never been the only dog before and he really really doesn't like being on his own back and checking up on him and spending as much time with him as possible so that's what I'll be doing this weekend and I am going to be finishing the road trip soon I'm halfway through this now at the moment so I'm hoping to get a good big chunk of it done tonight I've actually kind of been reading it in bits the last few days I just haven't really been I guess I haven't really been that invested in it like it's it's cute and it's basically about these people who are broken up and then they end up being in a car together on this really long car ride and like while there's some funny moments in it from like other characters I find the two of them are a little bit like annoying um, and the story itself like it isn't that like exciting so I'm hoping if I get into it properly um, I will enjoy it a little bit more so I'm hoping to get a chunk of this read today and yeah and then after that um, I'm going to be trying to pick up a new audiobook because I finished my audiobook last night which was The Therapist by B.A. Paris which I quite enjoyed that was four stars and it was a very very good audiobook so I recommend it for um, an audiobook listen um, so I'll be picking up a new audiobook and then when I finish this I'll be on to something else maybe just from my normal TBR or from my Eurovision TBR I guess you'll know when I finish it So I am back from my walk, I am showered, I am cosy, I did a bit of my jigsaw, I'm almost finished it, I have like just one part left, so I'm hopefully going to finish that by Monday, um, 
So hopefully I'll be able to update him one day and say that I finished that because I'll be home on Saturday and Sunday so I probably won't do much of it then. But yes, I'm excited to finish my jigsaw so then I can get on to my diamond painting that I bought a few weeks ago, which I actually bought after watching a vlog from Cody, um, from is it Cody's Book Corner. She was talking about hers, it, about doing them in a vlog and she was showing them and I was like, oh, that sound actually looks like something I would love to do. So I bought one and I can't wait to start it, but I told myself I wasn't allowed to start it until I finished my jigsaw because I like to have like one of those like kind of creative thingies um, on the go at one time. So I'll go from like a paint by numbers to a jigsaw to like back to a paint by numbers. So now I have my diamond painting as well. So that is exciting. I just love doing those and they're so good to watch while watching like a TV program or listening to an audiobook. So yeah, that was fun. So I have my, myself a gin, or not gin. This is like a, it's kind of like Copperberg, but it's like the little version of Cop Copperberg. So it's Sotma. So Scandinavian style cider. So this is elderflower and lime and it's really, really nice. It's really refreshing and it doesn't, it's one of those things that like is kind of fruity so it doesn't taste like alcohol at all. So yeah, this is actually lovely and exactly what I needed um, after today and this week. And yeah, so it's nice. So I've been asked by himself to make him a gin. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I have uh, some drum shambo here uh, gin. So I will make himself a gin. And then I think the next book I want to read will be Anxious People by Frederick Backman. That's the one I feel like I want to read. There's another book on my shelf um, that's like a doggy book that I'm kind of eyeing up as well. I might read that at some point. I don't really know. Um, I kind of feel like I want a nice dog book and I think that one's going to be a nice dog book. It's not obviously revolving around like a dog death but like a dog like a nice doggy um story so i think i might also pick that one up i don't know and i think the author of that is swedish so it would work for the eurovision tbr um that i have so yeah it's going to be between those two i did listen to more of my audiobook which was the truth must dazzle gradually um by helen duggan i think it was and i got a little bit more into that now um, i'm over halfway at this point and the story is the story basically does revolve around this woman um, and her battle with mental illness and her battle with like severe depression and showing kind of the effect of that on her family. Um, like part of me is like, it's a weird way to like really, I don't know, there's something weird about it in terms of like focusing a story around this and this woman's battle in like a sense of like looking at it kind of through her family. Um, I don't know, there's something kind of weird about it like I, I'm all for like obviously representation of mental illness and someone battling it but when you start with a suicide and then you work all your way up towards that suicide there's something I guess it's sad and morbid and I don't know I think like this book would obviously be very very triggering for some people so obviously there is suicide in it um mental illness death of a parent and then also you get points you get ch like chapters from the mother's point of view where she is kind of talking like suicidal ideation um so yeah i don't think some people would be able to read it yeah it's not terrible it's not like a terrible story i think the narration isn't great to be honest and um, i wouldn't rate the audiobook of it um but the story itself isn't bad but i don't know there's just something about it that like i'm just not like super mad about it so we will see
guys it is saturday um afternoon as you can see i am in my garden i'm at home and um, i'm just having some dog time with desi and he loves the cuddles as you can see he is just the best hugger in the world and i feel like i really needed that hug uh, this week as well so yeah i just love being home with him and yeah he's in good form thankfully so i just wanted to update on arthur because i'm actually almost like three quarters of the way through i only have a little bit left to read i'm really enjoying this i got like 100 pages read or almost 100 about 87 or 90 pages read last night and i read a good bit this morning as well and it's just such a lovely read it is as i said it is about this um adventurer this swedish adventurer who does kind of these like world adventure things where he goes and does these like crazy adventure races in different parts of the world and um, it's like a, comp a competitive thing and when he was in Ecuador doing this type of race a few years ago um, they basically came across this stray dog and he fed the dog and the dog ended up kind of following them along and um, while they were basically trekking 400 miles across Ecuador and um, through like the jungle uh, you know on rivers everything and the dog just like stayed with them and he ended up bonding with this dog who he called Arthur and the dog even like went into the canoes with them and it ended up becoming a bit of a sensation the media got a hold of it there was photos of them and like the whole world was rooting for Arthur and this Swedish team and hoping that Arthur would be able to find a home with them and when they got back to the end of the race the race was finished and um, he had to work then in getting um arthur looked after because he was obviously a stray he wasn't in the best like in the best like health and he has to figure out how to get arthur from ecuador to sweden so we're at that part now where they're flying home together and so far i've just really enjoyed it like just the bond between michael or mikhail i don't know how he says it because he's swedish um and arthur is just so lovely that lovely bond with the dog and that moment with the dog when you were like you know you're saying to yourself or you're saying making a promise of saying i'm never going to leave you you are mine and i am yours and you know i'm always going to look after you and i'm always going to be here um, and that's how michael feels for arthur and you know i definitely felt that with all my dogs but particularly when you're rescuing a dog from like you know bad place or you feel like a dog has had a bad past and um, i definitely feel like that with desi sometimes he can be very nervous and afraid sometimes we have no idea how, like where he came from originally and you know i definitely feel that protective sense with him of you know you're always home with me like i we will never be separated like me and you were we're one um i definitely feel like that with this book so yeah i'm really really enjoying it so far i'm definitely going to be finishing it today so i just wanted to give an update on that because yeah it's a it's a really nice book i really like it it's probably going to be five out of five stars because the writing itself as well is just actually really nice it's lovely and conversational um and again this learning about the adventure races as well is actually really really interesting and the arduous like crazy things that these people are going through just for this kind of i don't know like what it is just, yeah um, i'm really enjoying this and yeah i would definitely recommend it so far and i will update you when i finish but yeah it's really good Hi guys it is sunday evening so as you can see i am back in the apartment now i had a lovely day and um, i brought desi for a lovely long walk and we both really really enjoyed that so um yeah it was really nice to spend time with them but yeah we had a lovely walk it was a nice day i finished arthur um, as i predicted i would i finished that um earlier on and i gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars it was just a really enjoyable read and um, it was a very pleasant reading experience you know if you are a dog lover or if you like you know it's like basically fiction or non-fiction books about dogs like it's a book you're going to like um it is about a man who meets a stray dog and ends up doing everything he can to bring him home and give that dog a better life and 
yeah, I just appreciated that. So I have decided I'm going to pick up a book for the Asian Readathon next, and that is going to be If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. This is a book I've had on my Kindle for a while, and I'm picking this up for um, an Asian book that is kind of non-US centric. So this is a book that is set in South Korea as far as I know. I think it's all set in South Korea and it's looking at kind of the beauty industry in South Korea and basically the toxic beauty industry and what beauty standards are like for both men and women but particularly women in South Korea and what a lot of um, South Korean women go through um, to kind of you know fix different things about their faces whether it's you know bleaching their skin um whiter or getting like double eyelid surgery jaw surgery like very like expensive you know tough surgeries like not just like little surgeries like big surgeries that like really like re take a long time i think to recover from and people are doing this so i've heard some really interesting things about this book it's one i've wanted to read for a while so that is what i'm going to read now so I basically think for the rest of the month I'll just be like switching back and forth between books I want to read, Asian Readathon, and then the Eurovisionathon as well. So I'm just going to go back and forth with all of those books for this month. So yeah, I'm going to settle down and I think I'm just going to do a little bit of everything and um, probably will read for a while. I have a magazine there, I might read that for a while. I have my computer so I might either play The Sims or watch Booktube for a while. So yeah, um, I have the evening to myself um, so I kind of... You know, I can do a bit of anything. I was just playing the Xbox, I was playing Ori, so uh, I was enjoying that and then I got to a bit that I couldn't get through and was making me stressed. So I said I will leave that until tomorrow and maybe I will pass uh, that level tomorrow. So yeah, a really enjoyable weekend so far and I've had some really great reading. The last few weeks has definitely been a really great reading reading week for me. Um, yeah, books have definitely just been a great way for me to just escape and play through. So I'm really enjoying um, all of my reading. So, So that makes me happy. It is currently Tuesday afternoon and I am just in the middle of work but I wanted to quickly update this vlog and just update where I got my reading. I actually did very very little uh, yesterday as you might have guessed by the fact that I don't think I vlogged at all. Um, I stayed in, it was really rainy all day so I just stayed in. Myself and my boyfriend were watching Lost at the moment, he has me watching Lost and we were on season two so we binge watched a few of those episodes and yeah I've never watched Lost before so I have no idea like what's going on or what's happening so very interesting watching it for the first time um, and really you know like the urge to google everything and find out everything is very very strong but i've promised not to do that so i'm about 65 percent into if i had your face by francis cha which is the book i'm reading for the asian readathon and i'm really really enjoying it so far it's very easily easy to read the writing is very flowy and um i feel like even if even though it is a different culture um, and a different country than mine i find that i'm kind of understanding it quite easily and I'm actually getting kind of a glimpse into I guess South Korean culture more than I ever have before I feel like I'm learning a lot around like the beauty standards and what particularly young women um are kind of facing as they grow up but and as well in terms of almost like class issues in a way in like terms of um, money and like prospects and how much people have to struggle in terms of even like renting versus owning and yeah what like what young women especially like what they have to think about when it comes to how they're going to live their future and how that actually does almost tie back sometimes to what their face looks like and yeah it's very interesting so I am definitely enjoying that I think I'll finish that tonight because it, as I said it is quite a fast read I just didn't actually do that much reading yesterday as I said I watched Lost finished my jigsaw which was good and um, I did finish my audiobook that I was listening to which was The Truth Must Dazzle Gradually by Helen Cullen and um, I finished that while I was finishing off my jigsaw um, which was nice and I gave this a three out of five stars in the end it was I liked it and didn't like it in equal measure and um, I don't think the narration was great to be honest I came to the conclusion that one of the reasons that was off-putting the narration was off-putting for me was because 
it, the narrator genuinely sounds just like an Irish dad telling a story. Um, the American accents, as I said, were a little bit off. Um, the way he voiced women was a little bit off. And yeah, he just reminded me of like what my dad might sound like if he was narrating a story. So yeah, there was that. But the story itself, as I said, it follows, it follows a family... At the start you find out the mother, she has killed herself and then you go back to the start of the parents' relationship and you follow them through the early starts of their relationship. They're very much in love, they're very much happy but the mother deals with mental illness for almost her entire life and she really, really struggles with those dark thoughts until they do eventually consume her and the worst thing happens. And then you also follow kind of how it affects the family and the children afterwards and how as they grow up, though there's less on that than there is at the start of the parents' relationship. And like I liked kind of like the story and there's like there is actually um a like LGBT aspect to the story that I wasn't expecting near the end that I did quite like as well as I did focus on older characters and I find those stories particularly like older characters like finding things out about themselves and coming out in different ways and um, I do find that just as important as younger characters coming out and younger characters like coming to terms with their identity and embracing their identity and um, I think both you know younger and older it's just as important and for older characters generally it can almost be more difficult especially when you think about the type of when when they grew up and um, they grew up in a time where a lot of things were very very different and frowned upon and there was a lot more stigma so yeah I think that is important but I just couldn't really get my head around the whole story revolving around this mother's death and how she died and there was just such a strong thing around depression and suicide but I don't think it was like I don't think there was a lot around like getting help and like there was a message of getting help it was more like the mother literally was like this is the only way I could free everyone and um you know it's better to love to it, it was easier to love a dead mother than a mad one that's a line in the book and that just rubbed me the wrong way I didn't really like that um so yeah I had a lot of like mixed feelings about this book so I gave it a three out of five stars it would be on like, like a lower end of the three stars and those three stars are more for how the story wrapped up and um, more so than like the beginning of the story and um, there were definitely some lovely emotional moments near the end of it and to do with that lgbt um story storyline rather than the mental health storyline but there were just bits around the mental health storyline that just made me feel a bit uncomfortable and i just didn't know i didn't know i don't even know how to review it to be honest um so yeah there was that thank you guys so much for watching as i said i'm gonna have a little thing for luna um near at the end and yeah um thank you for being patient and for being so caring and loving and um, I know I've there's been a lot going on in my life over the last few months and um, a lot of sadness and a lot of grief and I'm still dealing with that a lot and having people just to talk to and to just bring out book content and just those little bits of niceness in my life as well it just it means so much so I'm really really thankful to everyone who watches everyone who comments everyone who always shares their love with me and um yes yeah, so I'm going to leave you with a little bit of Luna which I think is always a good thing.